Hey crafty friend, I'm Amanda with Pear Blossom Press and I'm so happy you're joining me today. This video is celebrating my friend Erica's birthday. Happy birthday, Erica. We are hopping along. There are lots of prizes to be won and all of that information is down below. Plus, I'm going to show you a sneak peek of a new product coming soon. So let's go ahead and dive in. In true recipe format, I like to show you the ingredients up front. So this is a balloon stencil. All the products today pretty much are from Heffy Doodle. Um, I've got the Jumbo It's Your Day uh, die set. And then I needed a little heart, so I found that in this Utterly Fabulous set. We're going to use these uh, wavy banners, sentiments, and also a coordinating die. And then in the Interactively Yours stamp set, there is a little push here. And later on in the video, I will grab a balloon and a balloon string because I figured I needed that. And then here's my sneak peek. So our halo lights are being redesigned. And instead of just wasting the middle circle, we are putting two one lights in the center. And I've already snapped one out here. You can see that they are a little bit longer and skinnier. We're also going to use a rainbow of distress oxides, and then I've got some white cardstock and a little scrap of vellum. You'll need those too. And then later I bring in some black cardstock too because I wanted more contrast. <laughs> so let's uh, dive into the how-to part. Um, I've got one panel and my card base. I'm going to line up that balloon stencil on the card base, and I've got the panel next to it. And I wanted to show you my... Um, I don't remember what it's called. We called it a brush NATO, but it's from <laughs> Make It by Marco. And it's the coolest thing. There's a little Lazy Susan underneath and you can add tiers to it. So I've got the, the base plus two extra tiers and it holds two sets of the full-size brushes for me and then one set of small little brushes. And that's perfect for organizing all of my, my um, blending brushes. And I just wanted to show you because it's also really cute on my counter behind me because it's all rainbow. <laughs> and whenever I think of Erica, I think of rainbows. Um, so that's why it inspired my card. And I also really wanted to show you my little brush holder because it's fun. So you saw me ink blend the, the smaller panel and then blend through the stencil to get a rainbow of balloons and a rainbow background. And I'm going to bring in the shadow for my jumbo word there. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough pink coming down because, um, you know, the panel's a little bit bigger. So I did decide to bring the pink down a little bit more on that panel. And I'm kind of making sure that I have enough um, coverage of balloons because you can shift that balloon stencil around and add more if you want them. But with the, the outline there, I felt like I had good coverage and I wanted some white space. So now I'm going to go ahead and die cut that shadow. And this is my Heffy Doodle little mini die cutting machine, which is super handy. When I first got it, I thought, oh, I probably won't use it. I probably can't fit that many dies through. Turns out a ton of my dies fit through. And I still have my um, full size die cutting machine, which I keep handy as well. But on my desk, this doesn't take up a lot of space and I use it for smaller dies. So I went ahead and cut out that shadow. I shifted it up to make sure I had enough room to cut out the banner as well. And then I cut out from white cardstock the words. And you'll notice I turned the, the point of the heart upside down for the, the dot of the eye, the tittle of the eye, <laughs> um, because I want it to look like a candle flame. And then now I'm kind of debating, do I want a black banner or do I want a rainbow banner? Is there enough contrast? So you know, spoiler, I'm going to use both, <laughs> but um, I didn't know at that point. And so for my light, we want the light to shine through and it's going to be behind the shadow. So that's why I needed that little heart. So I grabbed the little heart, put it upside down on the uh, shadow layer there, and then I'll just run that through and cut it out. And that gives us the hole there. And now it's starting to look like a candle. <laughs> We'll dress it up and make it fully look like a candle. So I grabbed a couple of Olo markers and a Copic multi-liner. Just this is like, I think a 0 0.3. So it, it's kind of like the same width as a lot of stamp lines. And then I grabbed uh, a couple of pink markers. And there's a big gap between these two because it's just a small area. With small areas, I like to use a bigger gap. Otherwise, they just blend and it looks like one color. So I used a really light pink and a, a bold, bright pink for the stripes on my candle and then I colored that little piece of vellum and I decided that it would be more yellow at the base not pink at the base <laughs> so I just blended it all together it looks better this way um, and then I also decided that the white stripes needed some shading too so I brought in a gray marker and a blender and that way I can blend those two together 
So I like the way that this looks. And you can take any lowercase i or l, you know, lots of letters will lend themselves to turning into a candle. So just, just wanted to put that idea out there for you. And then I'll just go ahead and glue these two layers together now. And I am using PVA glue in a fine line bottle. That's my favorite for paper to paper. It dries quickly, it doesn't warp, especially in the fine line bottle, it doesn't put out so much glue that it, it would warp. And you have a little bit of wiggle room. So that's my, my go-to. And then I decided that I didn't have quite enough contrast here for the uh, shadow between the, the balloons and the shadow layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a black shadow as well. And that'll also mimic the two banners, which I ended up deciding to use at this point. And I'm gonna bring that heart back in again because we need the light to go through the black layer as well. And I am going to offset the two. So at this point, I'm kind of determining how much of an offset I want. And once I figure out you know, that that's a, a good amount, I'll bring a pencil in and I'm just gonna trace through the heart there. Um, with a pencil, you can see on black paper almost always. And so I've got that. Now I can line up that heart and die cut that through there as well. And that way my heart is, you know, it, it's, it's not offset. <laughs> It'll be um, the same hole as the front, but the, the rest of it can be offset from the, the rainbow part. I hope that makes sense. You'll see as I glue it together. I'm, I'm not gonna have any black showing through the, the heart hole. It's just gonna line up perfectly. So we're good to go there. Now I'm gonna glue on the vellum. And if you watch some of my other videos, a lot of times I will mark through that hole before I glue the, the vellum on because I wanna know where to glue my light to the card base. But in this case, I'm gonna show you another handy little trick where we're just gonna glue the light to the back of that, that panel there, which will be fun. And, and you don't need to worry about lining it up on your card base. But before I glue the light down, I do wanna stamp push here and watch out the, um, the lights have metal, so the magnets grab them. <laughs> but I'm just gonna line this up in my Misty. I'm taking that tiny little push here stamp and I kind of put it on top of the button so I knew where, where it should go. And then I'm just gonna double check it again. I will pick that up with the lid of my Misty and then I can stamp it. It's much easier to stamp it now before I have dimension behind that panel. So that's why I'm doing it now. And it's always better to, with small words like that, stamp twice and use very light pressure rather than pushing hard and smooshing the letters all together. While I had my Misty out, I decided to heat emboss the sentiment, the little sub sentiment on the banner that says, let's celebrate. So I prepped the panel with my anti-static powder tool, which by the way, there's a coupon for rabbit hole designs down below, 20% uh, off like your whole purchase, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, so that information's down below. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and heat emboss my sentiment here. And notice that I used the uh, negative for the, the die cut from the black panel so that I could hold it in place while I stamped it. That's a, a handy little trick. Also using tweezers is handy. It gets your fingers out of the way so you don't burn them while you're heating it up and it lets you see things to line them up. So I went ahead and glued the shadow, the little black shadow behind the banner. And you saw me bring in the other panel just so that I could make sure my shadows were, you know, offset in the same direction and roughly the same amount. And now here's where I want to show you the old versus the new one light. The, the, that's the original one light, the smaller, more square one. And we're still producing those and we love them. But the new one is a little bit skinnier and the button is right underneath the battery panel. So it's a little different layout and that's only gonna be available in our Halo Light Combo Pack, which is coming soon. They're in production right now. Uh, and we're very excited about it. But I just, I always felt bad wasting the, the center material that gets cut out. Plus they charge us for it. So I'd rather, you know, add more value. <laughs> so that's what we're doing with it. And I'm, I'm very excited about these. They're a little more skinny, so they'll fit in a few more places maybe. Um, and the button, like I said, is straight down from the light rather than slightly off to the right side. And then now I've got it just stuck to the back there, which is pretty cool. And I'm gonna bring in some of our brand new world's best foam tape. 
it's finally here, you guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been working on this for like two years. Um, what makes this tape awesome is that it is not only double thick, so perfect for our lights and shaker cards, but it's repositionable at first. So you have about 30 minutes working time if you need to pull it up and move it around, which I think is really cool. And the release paper actually releases. You guys, that was a big deal for me. Like, I don't want to spend hours trying to get release paper off. <laughs> So we worked really hard to get the right combination of adhesive and release paper. And, you know, so I'm excited. It's finally here. Um, so I just went ahead and stuck that to my card base. And then for that little banner, I wanted it to have a little bit of elevation. Obviously not double thick too, because then that would be a really thick card. So I grabbed some of my super skinny foam tape. I think it's like a millimeter. So it's, it's really thin. And then I can just pop that up on the words there and it gives it a little more elevation and now we're ready for some finishing touches i added some little gems and i thought that would finish the card but then i decided i wanted a, a 3d balloon <laughs> so i grabbed out that uh, balloon and balloon stick there and i cut two of each because i want it to be a little more dimensional so i'm just going to glue the two sticks or strings together and then I'm going to go ahead and sandwich them between the balloons. Um, again, tweezers are handy to get your fingers out of the way. And the PVA glue gives you wiggle room. So I like to use that. Now I've gone ahead and glued one balloon on. I'll glue the other to the back side here. And then we can just kind of add it into the card. That string's a little bit longer than I needed. So I'll trim that down. And one more time, we'll get it just right. There we go. Now we can glue this to the card. You could elevate it with the, the skinny foam tape again too. That would work as well. Either, either way is good. But because it has a couple layers there, it has some dimension. And then that wraps up our card. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you will continue to hop along with us because there are some really fun prizes. Um, and I hope that as you hop along, you will be sure to give Erica a big uh, birthday wish and tell her happy birthday. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Again, the information is down below for the hop and the next stop in the hop. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to see more videos like this. As always, my friends, thanks for watching. 